Hello, everybody. How you doing? I just want to say I love you and God bless you. You're all awesome. I thank you for um, everything that you're saying on this question. Um, what is your number one purpose? Why are you here on this world and this planet? Why are you here? Why are you here? What is your number one purpose? Now, there's a lot of purposes. Okay, there's we we are according. In, a lot of those answers were absolutely correct in a lot of ways. But I'm 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 just wanting to highlight something. I was watching a sermon, and these are things that we say. So this sermon confirmed a lot. Um, something that um, I've always believed, and but we just got to be reminded. So I'm hoping this is just a reminder of uh, the number one purpose we are here. Let's give it to the Lord real quick. Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are. I thank you right now for this technology. I bless this technology. I cancel every evil assignment trying to stop this video. Father, I thank you for the computer that's in front of me, the Bibles that are in front of me, Lord God. I pray, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we all are in your right standing, in your righteousness, Lord God, that we walk according to your will, that we talk according to your will, that we do your will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, Lord. I pray that. I pray that this would convict people, that would put them back on the right path and help them understand why everything's happening to us because this purpose. Help me, Lord God. Holy Spirit, have your way with us so that Jesus is glorified. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Have your way with this video so that Jesus is glorified. All right, so I'm going to turn to... Well, first of all, let's look at the greatest commandment. Okay, it says Matthew twenty two thirty six to forty. I'll read it in Mark real quick. I had it in Mark. Um, it says, "And thou shalt love the Lord God." Mark twelve thirty. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. This is the first. This is the first commandment. Okay, now I'm going to go to Matthew twenty two thirty six forty King James, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is, Like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay? So we know love God, right? Well, let's look at this number one purpose. Um, thank you, Lord. So Romans 8. I'm going to start with 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good. Now, a lot of people say that. All things work together for good. But this is something that goes with it. To them that love God. Amen? All things, and we know, we know, me and you know, that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Thank you, Lord. 29. For whom? He did foreknow. He also did predestine. To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among Amongst many brethren. Amen. So. To be conformed to the image of his son. Okay I'm going to read. That was in the King James. And there's a commentary right here. I want to read the commentary. Uh, 29. Did foreknow. So it says some insist. That the knowledge here is not abstract. But is couched in love. And mixed with purpose. They had hold that God not only knew us. Before we had any knowledge of him but he also knew us in the sense of choosing us by his grace before the foundation of the world it says see ephesians um four um one four so let's turn to ephesians one four okay i'm gonna pause this and get there okay i'm back so we're looking at ephesians one it goes down to four according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy amen holy um, and without blame before his love, having predestined five, having predestined us 
and to the adoption of, of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Okay, amen. That's beautiful. All right, now it says, according also, it says, see, 2 Timothy 1, 9. Now, I had that, but I had to use my phone because the computer is messing up. So I'm going to look over here. I'm going to pause this again. I'm back. Thank you, Jesus. So 2 Timothy 1, 9. Me and my family were studying this today and really touched my heart. It says, he has, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given into us before Christ, before the world began. Okay, we are called uh, to be holy, too. We are called to be holy, okay? But our number one purpose is to be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. All right, now I'm going to finish this commentary. It says, Others believe that Paul here refers to the fact that it in eternity God, past God knew those who by faith would become his per people predestined. Predestination here is to moral conformity to his likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. The reason God foreknew predestined and conformed believers to Christ's likeness is that the son might hold a position of the highest honor in the great family of God. Okay, we were predestined. Okay, now a lot of people might not believe in that, but I do. And uh, I'm going to go to Romans 8, 29. Here it says, um, some, some says God's ultimate go, this is a, a, a King James version, but it's the life application King James version. Okay. It says, um, God's ultimate go for us is to make us like Christ. Okay. Um, first John three, two, it's telling me to look at first John three, two. So I'm going to pause this and grab it. All right. I'm back. First John three, two beloved. Now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear that we should be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Amen? We shall be like him when the coming of Jesus Christ comes. Okay, we can be perfect in Christ. Okay, we are being conformed into Christ to be made perfect and holy. All right, so hold on one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, continue reading this. Uh, thank you, Lord. Um, First John 3 As we become more and more like him We discover our true selves See our true selves is him Christ Jesus The persons we were created to be How can we be conformed by, to his image By reading and heeding his word By studying his life on earth Through the gospels By being filled with his spirit And by doing his work in the world Okay, if you're being conformed in the image of Christ Jesus, you got a job to do. Do as he did, right? So you really have to have intimacy and relationship with him. Okay. Um, there's a little bit more commentary here. It says 829 to 30. Some believe these verses mean that, that before the beginning of the world, God chose of his own free will, will certain people to receive his gift of salvation. This point to verses like Ephesians 1.11 which says that we are predestined according to the purpose. Okay, we just I believe we just read that, didn't we? Of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Okay, we didn't. So others believe that God foreknew those who would respond to him, and upon those he set a mark predestined. His mark predestined. What is clear is that God's purpose for man was not an afterthought. It was settled. Before the foundation of the world, mankind is to serve and honor God. Amen. If you have believed in him, you can rejoice in the fact that God has already known you. His love is eternal. His wisdom, his power are supreme. Okay. He will guide and protect you. Okay. Until you stand before his presence. Amen. All right. So what I wanted to get at right there is that you are predestined. Okay. Um... There's a lot of scriptures on that. I want to look up conformed real quick before we go any further. Conformed. Hold on, I'm going to pause this real quick. All right, I'm back. Okay, so to conform, all right? It says um, in the adjective Latin form, made to resemble. Assuming the same form, like resembling 
um, conform, verb, Latin, transit, transitive, to form or to shape. Uh, one, to make like uh, in external appearance, to reduce to a like shape or form with something else, with to as to conform in, um, anything to a model. Uh, two, more generally, to reduce to the to a likeness or com correspondence in manners, opinions, and moral qualities. For whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That's Romans eight twenty nine. That's that's the that's the that's the the verse that tells us our purpose, our number one purpose. Um, it also says, be, "Be not conformed to this world." So that's the opposite, right? Okay, we're, he's coming. We're coming out of the world. It says, "And be not conformed to this world." Romans twelve two, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that that ye may prove that is that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So being conformed in, in Christ's image, looking like His Son, holiness. We are called to holy living, holy lifestyle. Okay, like Jesus. All right. Renew the mind. Remember uh, Philippians 2, I think 6, let his mind be in you, which was in Christ. So you're to be conformed into his image. That's the sole purpose because only Jesus made it to heaven. Okay. And only Christ in us, Jesus, will make it to heaven. Okay. Okay. It, uh, 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 our spirit, our spirit is going to go somewhere. Our soul is going to go somewhere. Okay. This, God's spirit is going to go back to heaven, but the soul, okay, is going somewhere. We have eternal soul, and it's going two places. Okay, so we be, be be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. That's where it's at. It says to make agreeable to to square with rule of dictionary. It says demand of them why they conform not themselves to the order of the church. It says conform verb intransit. Sitive, okay, to comply with or to yield, to live or act according to, as to conform to a fashion or a custom, okay, to comply with, to obey, to conform with the laws of the state. These are all these definitions of conform. We are to be conformed, that means done, in the image of Christ Jesus, okay. Jude 24, 25 says that we will stand before him if we are in him. We will stand before him ready, exceedingly full of joy, um, and, and that we made it, that we done. He's going to say to us, you know, good and faithful servant. Jude 25, 24 is proof. Okay, is proof. So if you look at, um, right, righteousness in the Webster's 1828. Um, I looked at 1828 on conform righteous purity of heart, a rectitude of life, conformity of heart. Right? Conform to the image of the Lord. We're going to have the heart of the Lord. We're going to have everything of the Lord. We put on Christ. Okay? Okay, we die to self. We put on Christ. All right? Um, righteousness as used in uh, scripture and theology is which is chiefly used in nearly equivalent to holiness. Comprehending holy principles and affections of heart. And conformity to life to the divine law. It includes all we call justice, honesty, and virtue with holy affections. In short, it is true religion. Applied to God, number two, applied to God, the perfection of holiness of his nature, exact rectitude of faithfulness. Okay, three, the active and passive obedience of Christ, of Christ, by which the law of God is fulfilled. Um, I like this. The Lord, our righteousness. Um, so, righteousness is 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 in right standing with the lord we know that okay all right so you're in right standing with the lord you're in the perfect will of god okay and when you're being conformed to the image of god you're in the perfect will so this this goes against nobody will be perfect that's ridiculous if you have a mindset that you'll never be perfect how can you be conformed to the image of christ okay there god is that powerful God is that powerful to prepare me for heaven because only perfection and, and holiness is going to heaven. Christ. Christ in us. Okay. Now, I want to share something with you. Those trials that you're going through, those attacks, it's all to conform you to the image of Christ. 
That's why we are to rejoice. Okay? Um... Under all circumstances, under all storms, we rejoice. We rejoice. We are being conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. You might think, well, I set out in the name of Jesus and did something and it failed. I messed up. No, he's conforming you. Okay, you might think, well, this happened to me. No, he's conforming you. To the image of his son. Receive that. Let the Holy Spirit do what he does. He's very good at it. Conform you, teach you, counsel you, love you. He's the power in your walk. Let God's purpose for you to be conformed in Jesus Christ happen. Don't resist. Don't grieve the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Let it happen and rejoice. Everything that I went through, everything I'm going to go through, is to conform me to the image of Christ. All right, he's preparing me for the wedding day. Amen? That's my answer. Number one purpose is for you to be conformed to the image of his son. I pray that blesses you. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I pray everyone gets this and understands this. Um, we all have callings. We all have ministry. We all have this that we're doing in Christ. But that's all to conform us to the image of Christ. We all have these different walks, but we have the same purpose. To be, to be conformed in the image of your son. That we would bear that fruit. Oosh. Thank you, Jesus. That we would bear that fruit. More people being conformed. Fruits of the Spirit, clothed in Christ, everything. Suffering for Christ's sake. I love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I bless this video. I bless those who watch it. I thank you all for the answers on Facebook. I just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. I love you. God bless you.